Yeah. I think I'm hearing the angels again, right? <laughs> uh, is is back and back from the dead. Got the pasta jeans on <laughs> before he goes again. All right, friends. Welcome. <laughs> you know, you're looking, looking at me like that now, the whole bloody time. You poor son of a. <laughs> yeah, we're like an hour and fifteen, I think. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so then you have the grass is greener than syndrome guy. <laughs> we are actually the most <clears throat> humble guys that I know. It's kind of one of our strong points. And I have sniffed so much Yeti that <laughs> my head immediately became shaped for a flat brim. We never say how fit we are. We just don't talk like that. No. The through hiker. Basically, that is the guy hikes all day. If he's giving 110%, that's the best chance he has of getting an animal. You know, I know a guy like that. His name's I, Cousin Ben Morris. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't hear us talking about how awesome we are. No, dude, I wouldn't even mention that. Dude, we got about 200 yards with 200 pounds, <laughs> and we were like, oh, we must be retarded. There's, this is never going to happen. You can't, like... See I don't want to see anything coming from the left and right. <laughs> I have ninja type abilities. So I'm like, oh, you're going to die. Hello. All right. You're listening to the Gritty Bowman, home of Gritty Bow Hunting films, interviews, tall tales, and a wee bit of manly boasting. I'm South Cox, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is Corey Jacobson, and you're listening to The Gritty Bowman. We bone and raised outdoors, <laughs> and you've been listening to The Gritty Bowman. <laughs> there you go. I'm Casey. And I'm Jordan. And you're watching <laughs> The Gritty, Gritty Bowman. Bowman. <laughs> if you like the show, please go to our website at grittybowman.com and subscribe to this podcast and tell your mates and pals about us. Do us a favor and please take a moment to leave us a rating or a review on iTunes or on our YouTube channel. Send your questions and podcast ideas to grittybowman at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on iTunes, you can see the video version of this podcast on our website at www.grittybowman.com. All right, friends. Welcome to the Gritty Bowman Podcast. We are here today with the Gritty Scotsman, Mark Brownlee. I'm alive. Yes, this is not a eulogy here. No, this it's is, not. Uh, uh, we, M Mark, you've been through a lot lately, and uh, there's a lot of people that are wondering. Yeah, I didn't get an elk. <laughs> didn't get an elk. Um, and uh, but 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 beyond that, um, you know, you had a heart attack, and a couple of weeks later, I had a massive heart attack. Mostly because you didn't get an elk. Uh, actually, I, the doctor said that's why. <laughs> I was bugger all with cholesterol. It was not getting a shot in an elk. That's um, that's um, <laughs> just goes to show how important hunting is. Exactly. <laughs> so basically, we're going to talk today about uh, the heart attack. Uh, right. Where, where you've been? Um, kind of what happened? How, what got you there? And and uh, how you're doing? And what it's looking like going forward? Uh, basically, Mark, you, you kind of died on us and then came back to life. Yes. So uh, what happened, man? Let's get right into it. <coughs> Genetics <laughs> is the uh, culprit here. My granddad died at 52. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad had a heart attack at 58, but he's still here. But anyways, uh, I decided to pull it off early at 48. Um, it's young for a heart attack, man. Yeah, it's young. But, um, you know, like I told you, five years beforehand, I had myself checked out because of genetics. You know, they went in, checked me out. Do oh, you know that hereditary in your family that, that a lot of the men die early, die young from a heart attack? Yeah, I'm a dad's side, but not on my mom's side. Right, right. You know, so, but so, I still got checked but out. You still so. got that, you, you know, on your dad's side, there's been some early death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they're finding out now that it's, that's a huge part of it, yeah. is genetics. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, because you know. It's like breast cancer, you know. Right. Uh, it's, it seems that it's very, very linked to, right. to, 
to hereditary causes. There's certain genes that will make you, you know. Yeah. Like, you you know, you could lean that way or lean this way. And that's the same with a heart attack, right? And uh, so I had it, uh, I had myself checked out. My wife's an ER nurse, you know, mm-hmm. Amy's an ER nurse. And so being a nurse, she's all, well, you're going to get in and get checked out. So I went in and they checked me out. They go up and they put some dye in there. And, oh, your arteries are brilliant. They're clear. I wish we had them. So that, And this was like two years ago? No, five years ago. Five years ago. Okay. Five years ago, we had this done, right? And so... Uh, I remember that. I didn't, It doesn't seem like it's been five years, yeah, dude. that's when I was, you know, yeah. 235 pounds. But then I lost all the weight and got mm-hmm. myself, you know, diabetes and control and everything. And and uh, then this year, you know, they told me everything was fine, perfect, mm-hmm. looked great. Yeah. So I thought, like I told you, I thought, hey, I got my granny's heart, right? Yeah. She's 90-odd, drinking and smoking before she died. I'm like, <laughs> woo! You know, I'm going to be... You're home free. I'm home free. I'm, I'm solid. I'm going to be hunting until I can't walk, mm-hmm. right? And uh, then we went hunting this year, and then two weeks later, I was out chopping wood, and I was having some pains. I thought it was my back. But <clears throat> anyways, so finally I go in the house, and Amy gets home, and she's only been home like five minutes, and, and I'm like, something's up. This is not right. And I'm checking my blood sugar, and... I'm not feeling right, and she comes over, and she walks right in the bed, comes over, and then the next thing I know, I just, I fell back, eyes open, and I'm dead. And, uh, of course, she jumps into automatic mode, right? And the nurse jumps up, and just starts them rubbing, starts knocking me around and screaming at me, and then gets on the phone and starts calling the ambulance. And <laughs> next thing I know, I, I wake up, and... Uh, She's on the phone. <laughs> the ambulance giving the address. And Amy just walked in the door. Yeah, just five minutes. Yeah, she just got home from working 12 hours in the ER. And uh, so uh, I, w- I, I, w- I wake up, and, and uh, she's on the phone calling an ambulance. And the first thing out of my mouth is, uh, hold on, I can make it to the car. We don't need to call bloody ambulance. <laughs> you know, because you, sc- you tight <laughs> Scottish... It's, it's, you know, ours, it, 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 you know, those admit things. it, you, you had a, you had a medical bill a while ago from a, from a, an ambulance thing with your daughter. Yeah, my daughter. And I didn't want to have to pay <laughs> $2,500 for a lift for two miles. Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. So. I mean, never mind that you're having a heart attack here. Well, I didn't know that at the bloody time. Well, at the time I thought, obviously uh, there's something serious well, happening. When Amy put it in, uh. Perspective? Medical terms. Uh-huh. You're getting in the blankety blank ambulance. <laughs> I understood from a medical point of view that it was more than just low blood sugar. Okay. So I so, just, so Amy knew you oh, were having no, a heart she attack. Knew right, yeah, she knew right away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No doubt. Oh, no, she knew. I mean, she sees people all the time. Yeah. They come in doing the same thing. So uh, so anyways, I end up going and... and uh, and then I was, I'm getting wheeled out of the house, and there's a bloody fire truck in my driveway. And that's when it hit me, you know. <laughs> Something's going on, and then, you know, I'm in the car, and I'm in the ambulance, and, and they're driving me. And, you know, it's uh, it's um, <laughs> it's really weird, though, you know, because when you, when you go through something like this, you know, you, if you think about it beforehand, you think, you know, oh, well, I'm going to be worried, you know worried about dying or I'm going to think of this, I'm going to think of that, you know. And um, honest with you, you know, I uh, I was completely fine. I was at peace. I wasn't stressed out. I wasn't afraid. Yeah. You know, um, and that's one of the things that I noticed the, the most. I, I thought I would be in a bit of a panic, but I wasn't. I was a total peace with myself. Um, and then when I was in the ambulance, um I remember this big, thick ambulance uh, fire fireman. He was a paramedic, and I can remember him jumping up and, "Hey, hey, stay with me, stay with me!" And I, what the hell, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. This okay is in the know. ambulance. In right. the ambulance, we're flying down. Well, Amy knew the ambulance driver, and he's got the bloody thing floored, right? Because yeah. she she sees him at work all the time. He's got the thing floored. Anyways, um, the only thing I. I thought about it was the fact that I'd yelled at my kids 
earlier that day, you know. And I told you this when, when you came to see me the next day in the hospital. And uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. It, uh, it's amazing. It, it, amazed, it amazed me that, um, that yeah, I wasn't worried about anything else. I was just worried about what my kids uh, were going to uh, remember as their last memory of their father, you know. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sad thing. <clears throat> but uh, they got me there real quick. Mm-hmm. They got me into a place real fast, and they it's amazing now, you know. Like, I, you know, my granddad, if he'd have been around now, he'd be alive because of what they know now. And I'm in there, and they're sticking cameras in in my arteries and I'm watching my heart there and then they put in a big bloody stent and as soon as they did that then it was like some big fat arse had just stepped off of my chest you know I could breathe breathe. and then I knew it was going to be fine then so once that happened I was fine and I was you know and then I saw you uh, a couple uh, few hours later a few hours later I saw you at the hospital you and Jeff come by and and, uh, but uh, yeah so, went to the happy hunting grounds. It wasn't happy enough, so I came back. <laughs> the, uh, you know, we talked about this a little bit. You know, what exactly happened? Because, you, you know, you're you've been trying to exercise. I've been doing and, all the right be, stuff. Be healthy and all that. And so, so, and and then you got the heart scan earlier, and yet mm-hmm. you still um, had that collapse. Yeah, well, what that's what exactly happened. It, what the cardio st- cardiologist told me was it was genetics, right? Yeah. So this is what this is the one thing I'm, I talked to you about. You know, what do I want to say to people out there? I want you to, people out there understand. Even though, like, I like I lost all this weight, right? I went from two thirty five down to one hundred and ninety, all healthy. Went started to learn how to go hunting. Went hunting, carrying packs, was mm-hmm. much happier. Thought everything was great, but then snap! All of a sudden. It, I could have been dead. Five minutes either way, I'd be dead. If the wife had come home five minutes later, I'd be dead. You don't know how much time you got with your kids, right? Thankfully, I've got some more time. I'm going to be able to get the opportunity to teach Angus how to hunt, mm-hmm. right? Which I'm very thankful for. And uh, I think that's, that's the main, main thing that I'm drawing out of this, is that you just, you've got no idea when you're going to go. So now, I've got this, I've got a much clearer way of looking at life that I live life every day now because tomorrow you might fall over dead, right? <laughs> I mean, I, no, it's, it's, it's true. sad. It's bloody sad. No, it's true. Um, but it's true. You might get hit by a bus or when, a taxi like Elf. Once... Well, go back to tell me. I was going to say when Suzanne was diagnosed with cancer, uh, one of the things that she said that during during the cancer, she, she said it, it was weird because it felt like um, for her life had stopped, like slowed down, like just it it had um, it felt like the world sped up around her. And just mm-hmm. kept going and happening, and things were normal for other people, and they and their lives were just just kept going. But her life um, was on hold; like it had just sort of hit this spot. And um, sh- you know, you don't know um, if you're gonna if you're gonna s- survive mm-hmm. the the cancer, and you're sick, and and you're going through this. And she said. Um, it made her realize that um, all the things that she had thought were so important to her that had, she had thought were like all the stuff she had busied herself with mm-hmm. all of a sudden really didn't matter in, they, at all. They don't hold at anything. all. And the things that really did matter, the things that are really important to her, those things, they became really clear. And it from that point forward... You know, it changed both of us dramatically, her in different ways than me. And um, the things that 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 we both thought, you know, we, we used to get worried or stressed out about just didn't, 
didn't stress us out anymore. We yeah. just didn't didn't bother us anymore. Yep. And, and I think that one of the blessings that comes from th- these kind of experiences is just is just that that clarity that comes um, about life and about what matters to you and what's mm-hmm. most important. You can distill it down to just those those really important things and all that stuff that we get all bent out of shape over or caught up in just don't matter. They don't. So back to your heart, you know, when it was, uh, what did the cardiologist so say? It, it was genetics. What happened was um, the part of my heart that got closed off 100% <laughs> collapsed from the outside. And it, it, it collapsed in mm-hmm. and tore open and then filled in really quickly. And that's what caused me to have that massive heart attack. So so the arteries look good, you're saying, and yeah. everything, but then something happened on the outside? Yeah, yeah. There was buildup on the outside, okay? And then... Buildup uh, of... Well, there was, there's, there's, there's buildup all over you, but what I think it is, it's genetically, I had a weakness there, mm-hmm. and it broke, right? And it collapsed, right? Mm-hmm. And it could have been, you know, under a lot of strain, you know... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, from when I was out carrying stuff, uh, something that right. but, took you to the edge. But but I think it was like my granddad. You know, it was just something that happened. But back then, they couldn't go in and put something in there and open it back up. That was one thing that I found fascinating was they they put a stent in, and I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm looking on your chest for the for the cuts and stuff. Right. No. And they didn't cut you open. No, no, they do it right here, like I was telling you earlier. <laughs> you have vivid memories of. How they installed that, Mark? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> so why don't you tell folks how that goes down? Well, in the ER, um, there's a little buzzing noise going on, and I remember uh, kind of coming through and, and going, Amy, why are they shaving near me bollocks? <laughs> and, but that's what they do. And then they go through the artery, and they stick a camera in your groin. In your groin. Right, right there right where, your, yeah. where your madness meets yeah, you, your leg. You did a little podcast on <laughs> shaving, didn't you? Yes, right, I, you, I did, in fact. You and Aaron, right? Yeah, well... Yeah, same same thing. But they put a camera in a camera. They shove that in. The, there's a main artery that goes there all the right. way to your heart. Right. All so the they way go up. in right in your groin there through that artery, and they went up. Yeah, they go all the way through, and they and they and they go in. They put this dye in, and then you're, the the thing is, you're laying there, and there's people sitting there talking, blah, 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 and there you are looking at your heart on a big screen TV. Cool. You know, oh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> While you're still trying to breathe, right? You know, <gasps> I saw Wolverine. Oh. He did that. Remember? I don't oh, know yeah, if you saw right. that latest yeah, one. He's got yeah. a little bug on his heart, you know, yeah. and he's looking at it on the screen. Similar. It looks cool. I just like that. Yeah. You're yeah. like Wolverine. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, so, it, you know, they do that, right? And uh-huh. and uh, they got these little screens and, and they put it in and it's uh, and they put it in and it open it up. And a I little what? It's a little screen. It's like a screen. It's like a, a filter, like on a car filter. Yeah. But m- m- tiny micro mesh type thing. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And they put that in there. As soon as they put that in, pull it out, I could breathe. Now, doesn't that thing uh, harden around your artery like uh, it's medicated? Yeah, it's a medicated one, right? And so what is so it's now... it's inside your vein. Inside it, yeah. And it's holding and it everything it pops up. everything open and mm-hmm. kind of and repairs now, that now broken my, section. My body's, my body's now going in and my body fills it in with stuff and, and makes it smooth in it. Like your own mm-hmm. tissue or material yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and heals it. And I'll heal it. And then, uh, I mean, now I'm, I'm doing more stuff now than I was, you know, uh, eight weeks ago. You're, you're, you're less tired, about. feeling yeah. good. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will be uh, full on hunting next year. So leading up to the event, did you have any signs? Did you, did you feel anything? No, it was what, not even three weeks before that. I was up in the yeah. mountains carrying around a pack trying to find elk with 25,000 other hunters. <laughs> well, we won't get into that. It was a rough year in Oregon. It was a Oregon. freaking horrible Oregon year. With all that fire and stuff. I, that's what it was, all the, the fires. The hunting the over-the-counter hunting opportunities were, were limited to two square miles, and all of us were in that two square miles trying to hunt elk. There was uh, there were more people hunting than I, I've ever seen mm-hmm. before. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah, it reduced it down to kind of a ridiculous farce. It wasn't really hunting. It was just no. Like, if there's forest fires next year. I'm going to Idaho. <laughs> yeah, Alaska. Alaska, anywhere. Yeah. So on the um, the heart thing, 
what's the prognosis now? What are, what are they going to? Well, in a, in a month, I, I get another thing done. They, I don't know what they bloody call it, but they, it's like <laughs> ultrasound, and they check my heart, and they'll be able to tell me uh, how much of my heart's healed, mm-hmm. the part that got damaged from being shot off. But uh, the cardiologist told me, you know, I got, you know, there was a lot of things in line. First, my wife. She's an ER nurse. An ER nurse, right? Well, you know, if you're going to have a heart attack, <laughs> there's number one in the in the line for getting married to, right? <laughs> so she basically saved my life, right? You know? And uh, so... Um, She's and also then I got, easy so, on the eyes. Well, so. yeah, that doesn't help, does it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I'm very lucky. Um, then, you know, I got to the hospital right quick. Mm-hmm. The ambulance driver knew her, so he had the thing floored. Not that they don't floor it for everybody else, but, I mean, he was he was moving. It was something else. Um, and I got to, uh, right into a really good place, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it worked out that way. And, uh, and, and the... The permanent side effects from these sort of things is that you've actually killed a part of the heart or the tissue's dead or it well, you Well, da- dam- you damage part of it, but mm-hmm. this is the thing. That's what I thought. I was, I was like, so am I just buggered? Does this mean I can't mm-hmm. get my, you know, get certified as a hunter because I haven't killed something yet? <laughs> I was really pissed. And he said no. He said no. He said it's amazing. He goes, y- you got to here really quickly. You had mm-hmm. everything done. Amy had me chewing aspirin. When I woke up from the thing, mm-hmm. which was a good thing, okay? Yeah. Because that thins you out and that helps. Thins the blood and stuff. Right? And so, um, and then I got in right away and, um, you know, at, I think if I wouldn't have lost the weight before and yeah. gotten healthier, it would have been a lot harder on me. Yeah. I really do. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and he said that, too, you know, because... Um, I mean, I remember, Mark, I mean, when we first went hunting together. Right. Um... Uh, Compared to how it was like the last couple of years when you go hunting with me, there's no comparison between right. the two marks. Right. I mean, the first one was such a wreck you couldn't you couldn't hike short short distance. Right. Um, I mean, it was ho- physically, and that was tough. with a little tiny pack. Yeah. Whereas yeah, now, now you're carrying fifty pack. pounds right. or more, and you're you're keeping up with me. Right. Um, hiking through the trees and the woods and climbing. Oh tough no, it trails. made a huge, a huge mean, difference. There's no if 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 I mean it's obvious, you know, from anyone on the outside looking that you know your level of health and wellness compared to then is dramatically higher. So right. I mean, it has to have had a profound effect on on you know your your recovery from the right. It is. It is, and I'm doing all the stuff that I'm supposed to now, and uh, doing cardio, uh, cardiac rehab through the hospital. They hook me up to so they're doing monitors. physical therapy. Oh yeah, on I'm you. on a treadmill. I'm on a bike. I'm lifting weights three times a week, and they they've already told me they can see a massive in- increase in my heart recovery from when the f- I first went there. Yeah, you know, so I'm doing everything right, but you know, being healthier before really really helped. So uh, you know, it was a genetic thing. L- lucky for me. We caught it, yeah. So I can still become a hunter. <laughs> well, like you said, I think there's years of, of you know where where weight slowly crept up on you. The diabetes oh, yeah. did, and and that that stuff you know takes its toll over time. You know, I I I often think of when I and I think I've told you this before. Like when you're talking about genetic predispositions that people have, uh-huh. that you know. Everybody has these different pre, uh, you know, predispositions because of the genetics they inherit from their right. their parents or their grandparents. Right. And there's certain behaviors that we can do to bring those those genetic tendencies out uh-huh. and make them present themselves in a much higher degree. You know. Right. And I I've heard this analysis this this example given before where they take like a native american indian right where they've alcoholism is is a very strong Mm -hmm. you know if you call that a disease it's a it's a very strong Uh, uh, disease yeah yeah tolerant you know problem for for native many native americans it's a lot of scottish people too (laughs) well and it's no it's the honest goodness too oh and it's genetic it's Mm -hmm. like if but if that native american never drinks a bottle of alcohol he'll never have 
al- suffer from alcoholism. Right. That that genetic predisposition won't be won't present itself. Right. And I think f- often, like in your case, where it comes to heart disease and stuff, that you know, if if we hadn't spent years eating the way that we do in America, right? You know, like we all are guilty of. I mean, I pounded uh, the Taco Bell all through college and um, and junk food and the sodas and stuff at times in my life. The the years of doing that, um, to put this in perspective, um, I probably have a different set of genetics, right? So right. I could drink the same amount of soda that you drank for 10 years. Right. And I'll have some some bad side effects from it. But they won't be the same as yours, where yours is heart disease, right. let's say, you know, because that's your genetic profile. It's it sort of lends itself to that what was presented to it in that that way maybe mine is like you know bad joints or whatever right yeah but um we're not what i want to say here is we're not like genetics don't mean we're locked into no a we're forced into a a a losing battle like we've just been cursed you know there's a lot that we have control over um, in the in the same way that the Native American, uh, you know, pre predisposition for alcoholism, say in the same way, if they don't have alcohol, they don't suffer from the disease, right? Right. You don't eat, uh, you know, your standard American diet of McDonald's and, and Coca Cola for years, and and a guy doesn't get presented with the pre- genetic predisposition for that. Some people, I think, just are way more sensitive to, let's say, sugar intake. Than yeah. another guy genetically. Another guy is way more sensitive to to uh, milk or or dairy. So I, I think that there's that you know that 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 because uh, I one of the things that bothers me is when I when I hear some people say, um, you know I'm I'm overweight just because I'm it's genetic I inherited it. Um, and no, I heard the guy putting it one way. He says nobody nobody gives birth to somebody that's three hundred pounds. Okay, yeah. So genetic up yourself with that. I mean, <laughs> no. Okay, it had to go over the lips and down the gullet, <laughs> right? Before but, it got to your arse. Right? But I do feel like there are people that oh, people are yeah. But you're just like I was for diabetes, mm-hmm. more predisposed. To, to, to have an issue with that. More sensitive right, to, yeah, right, you, to certain yeah. things. Like my granddad was that way. My granny yeah. told me. He had a real sweet tooth. Well, okay, so he was more predisposed to, oh, oh candy or cupcakes or cookies, right? Yeah. Well, somebody could be that way and it'll affect their weight. Right. Sure. But that doesn't mean you have to be a fat arse. Okay? Yeah. You can still gain control of it. It's going to be a wee bit harder for you yeah. to do it. But... You still have that ability to to control it, and I think over time. I mean, I'm not I'm not being. Uh, I hope no one takes this as being me being uh, insensitive to to different to, to different genetic profiles that people have, because I I I'd absolutely sympathize with with someone who has a, you know um, an addictive personality or someone who oh. who who seems to put on weight, you know, when they look at a donut. You know, right. with, they hardly have to eat a thing. Or, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I I could eat I eat, I can eat a lot of sugar, and it doesn't seem to really do much to me. Um, at least the way it does with some other people. You know, so. Right. But uh, I so I think um, you know, there's definitely, but that that just set, says to me though that in you got to know your body, yeah. and, and you got to pay attention to your strengths and weaknesses and and you got to work within what what you've been given and what you've got and if you do that you can really maximize a high quality of life both both in uh, mental and physical health and wellness but you got to you can't just cop out go up oh, uh, I just genetically got shafted and then yeah. walk away no. I mean there's people that are uh that uh, that got genetically shafted in more ways than than I have born without a you know, a limb or right. something yeah. like that, that, yeah. that can do things that I could only dream of, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, no. physically. And so you can rise above, you can get past those things. No, you can, you can. No, I think that's, and that's, that's part of what, you know, and you were talking earlier about Suzanne and, and, and in that experience, when you have these kind of experiences, uh, you start to view things in a whole different way, whole different perspective. And, uh, and, uh, 
I, you know, it's, I've told, it's like I told Amy, I says, I says, you know, this is going to be one of those crappy things that happens to you. Yeah. But it's going to turn out later on, I'm going to go, you know, the best thing that happened to me was having that bloody heart attack <laughs> and, um, and dying. That was the best thing that's happened to me. Because the way I now look and interact with my kids, yeah. that alone has, you know, improved my life. Yeah. And improved their lives, right? You know? I, it's funny that... Um like I was getting interested into filmmaking, you know, and, and just sort of the podcast thing yeah. before Suzanne was diagnosed with cancer. When I went to the full draw film school, um, she had a small lump that we had had tested three or four times. Yeah, I know. And it was, yeah. it was. No, then you tell her, go to the hospital, go oh, to the doctor. And she I mean, was like, ah, sorry. I mean, while we're on the subject, I'll, I'll just tell that story. You know, she. She had uh, this lump that showed up, and you know it was not a big lump. I was in India at the time for work um, across the ocean. She called me up and she said, "I've got this lump in my neck that just showed up, you know." And I'm I don't I don't know. It's been there a few weeks. And I never told you, but um, and here I am like across the ocean going. So I hear a lump, and my brother Brent, who's running right. the camera here, he was diagnosed with leukemia. Mm -hmm. We went through cancer. We went through it all when Brent got, um, as a little boy, you know, bone marrow transplants uh, or, or, I mean, uh, uh, spinal taps and chemotherapy and stuff. And I was, um, I was there for a lot of those things. And I knew, I know what cancer, I've been there firsthand and seen and been present for much of the treatments and stuff. So I, I don't know, when she said she had a lump, I just had a feeling. Right. Um, and so we came back. I came back from India, and I went, and we, we had her checked. Um, we went to so many doctors. And each time we went to a doctor, they were like, yeah, it's nothing. Yep. And they did uh, biopsies and stuff, and they're like, no, it's not cancer. It's just uh, overactive lymph node or something else. And, um, and each time I was like, you know, I think, <laughs> I think you're wrong. The answer doesn't sound right to me. Right. Um, how do you know this? And they would tell me how they studied it, how they did a needle biopsy. And then I would do research and find out that that doesn't really, that's not a very good biopsy. And so they took a small piece and, uh, and then I found out that they needed a cross section of a larger piece to really know. And so I just kept sending her back and we just schedule another point. We'd go to another doctor, we'd get another opinion. And I think we saw like six doctors. The frustrating thing with that is that when you go <clears throat> to get a cancer diagnosis, especially for a swollen lymph node, they get a lot of people in there with swollen lymph nodes. And usually it's not cancer. Right. And so they kind of have, a, a lot of doctors kind of have an attitude like, eh, it's probably not cancer anyway. Because you know? for them, though, most of the time it probably not, isn't, right? Yeah. So that's probably why they lean that way. Right? And then a lot has to do with insurance companies and what they pay for. And, you know, if she had just had a, a, a scan done, they would have been able to just find out. Just yeah. they, she drinks some radioactive fluid, and and then they do a scan, and they can see if there's cancer cells present. Right. Well, they don't really, they won't really do that until they've identified that there is cancer there, which because the scans are really expensive, and they also subject the the, the patient to radiation that's maybe not needed. But to get a a a uh, you know to get the cancer tested, they gotta go in and and uh, cut out tissue, really, right, and large piece of it, you know, and and really take a look at it anyway we finally just just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and you when you get your results back which seems to take two weeks to a month you, then you then you got to reschedule another one which takes another week or two and then you so months go by um and uh but she was diagnosed with uh, lymphoma and that was um you know it was finally a relief to get it figured out and to get it done and, um, you know, the, the tissue was growing and when they took it out, it was, it was, uh, they, they thought it was maybe the size of a, you know, a, a uh, like a, a golf ball, maybe smaller, but it was, it was literally like the size of a, a, a grapefruit. I mean, it Bloody was hell. just, it got, it got huge and it was kind of in your body. So you don't really see it. It just sort of, things were displaced, but, um, anyway, when they did the 
when she was diagnosed with it. At the time, I was still doing the podcast stuff, and I was kind of working on it. I hadn't really, I hadn't done anything or launched anything, and it was sort of more of an idea. I didn't even, actually hadn't even considered the podcast. It was just, hey, I just want to learn how to make a couple of movies for mm-hmm. for my buddies and me. But after she was diagnosed with cancer, and as we went through the cancer treatment, like you were saying earlier, I just, I decided, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I, what do I want to do with my time? Because there's not, it's not like this, it's unlimited, right? You have this life and it's, you get, you get so many days and then it's over and you don't know when it's over. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, what do I want to do? And that's when I was like, I want to do what I'm passionate about. And that that was what I do now. You know, I, I love to do the podcast and and the film stuff. You know, with with the tours, it's I get to share my ideas um, and and maybe change lives if possible. Um, and so I. Uh, having that thing you say you know it makes you stop and go hey what's what's so puts life in perspective i yeah. guess mm-hmm. and for me absolutely suzanne um going through chemo and all that it really made me decide where do i want to spend my time right. and so i look back on it i'm still not ready to say you know it was the best thing that ever happened to me <laughs> <laughs> and i'm i'll be honest i'm still bitter uh that she had cancer a little oh, bit. Yeah. I struggle with it. Um, still working, sorting that out, you know, who I'm bitter at or what, or it's, it's a little harder to figure out sometimes. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I, uh, we're still, you know, bouncing back. We're still trying to, to sort, sort things out. And so far, thankfully, it looks like the cancer is not, not there anymore. And like with you, you know, it's in the back of your mind. It has to be that, you know, I'm working on my heart, but out of nowhere, it just came. What if that happens again? Oh, yeah, it could. Bloody, it could happen in six months. could happen in six years. could happen in 20 years. Who knows? And that, that part makes you live life a little differently, I think. No, it does. The experience does. And the experience, it teaches you that. And then you realize, you know, just live, live each day because you may not have tomorrow, right? Yeah. So I want to do stuff too. I want to. I want to get freaking credited as a hunter. I want to kill something. <laughs> I want to kill you're, one of these buckers. You're you know? a, you're you are a hunter, Mark. I, uh, I'm a hunter, but I'm not. I, I don't know how to put it. I, like, I don't know. I mean, I can. I haven't earned my. I gotta earn it. I'm well, like you know, I'm anything. I gotta earn it. Once I, I've earned it, then I'm. I will tell you this: that that uh, in, until I had, you know, accomplished a few things uh, as as a hunter, it it did. I did feel that drive to to do it, make it happen, because mm-hmm. you know, especially when you first start out, like with elk hunting. Man, elk hunting's tough. It's just it's just there's no way around it. Killing an elk especially with a bow and arrow is just, it's just a hard on every level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, it's, it's, it, everyone can go out and chase them. A- and you've been there mm-hmm. lots of close calls. And I had close calls for years with my bow before I finally killed one. And, uh, it just gnaws at you a little bit. I think not having, when you're in that stage where you're trying and you're and you're so close so many times and yet it doesn't happen and you're like just and and you know and and there's a certain sense of relief for me it's like okay i've I've killed a few elk and and it's like you know what i'm i i did it you know um i want to do it a lot more <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i can relate to you like what you mean yeah it'll happen but i do think we need to get you started on some other animals too Oh no! One of them would be good too, eh? I think I think you know deer, you know, is a lot easier than elk um, in terms of physical fitness levels that are needed. I mean, you draw a great elk tag in a great unit, right? You don't need a lot of fitness. I mean, you can you can get by. 
or a rifle tag in some places. Mm-hmm. But you 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 hunt an over the counter elk hunt with a bow, dude. You earn it, man. You don't get it unless you earn it. It's just right. it's it requires so much physical level, such a high level degree of fitness. Um, I think uh, it just does. So, we'll work on it. I'm going to get there. <laughs> I already know that. You know, just a matter of time. Yeah. And I got the time now. <laughs> Your brother's nodding. That's right. Brent hasn't shot a, uh, an elk either. My brother. We're working on that. We Not drag first. him out on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Right now, what's the plan for the next few months? Just keep up with my exercise and cardio rehab, mm-hmm. and then just go from there. That's and it. Do, is there a certain period of time where they require they they want to require you there for for uh, Not, physical uh, therapy and stuff? Or no, at the end of this month, end of December, I'll be done, and then uh, I'll be doing it all on my own. So, and what's your plan? Just. W- I'm just gonna be working Continue out like what I'm they doing. Yeah, did for you there. Yeah, just doing, just exercising, good forty minutes of cardio, and and then lifting some weights of, at least at least three four times a week. And that's nice. it. You know, I was checking out gym prices the other day. Bloody hell! <laughs> Talk about ambulances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no so, doubt. Yeah. But anyways, gyms are, g- a gym is a uh, membership can be a little steep, yeah. especially if you do like a CrossFit style. Bloody hell! Gym. Yeah. yeah, those, those uh, can be yeah. steep. Cheeky buggers. Yeah. Hey, we can just walk CrossFit here, Brian. That's Mark. right. Yep. Me, yep. And, me and Bryce do it. Yep. You know, in his ghetto yard, the ghetto lofts gym <laughs> in the in the front yard. <laughs> so. Oh, that. Well, that's it. Well, so I'm alive. You're live. More to come. We got some gritty tips coming. That's right. We're going to get back on having some fun, poking some fun at some other uh, people and products. I mean, promoting other people and products. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just fun to do that stuff. Taking the pesh out of people. (laughs) That's what we'll be doing. That's what we like. It's fun. No, it is. Good times. All right. Well, anything, uh, any last words, Mark? Before we close this podcast, ah, uh, live life because tomorrow you might die. Mm. <laughs> anything Be nice to your kids? <laughs> anything more uh, positive? More, uh, more positive? <laughs> Merry yeah. Christmas! Yeah. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's you know, we're talking about stuff that's sad, but I mean, it's also good stuff. It's kind of heavy stuff. It yeah, is, but it's sure. good stuff though. You know. Take it, take it for what it is. Yeah, that's life. Yep. So just stay gritty. Yep. I'm glad you're live. <laughs> Me glad too. you're back. So is my wife and kids. Yep. Yeah. We'll uh, start start hitting some more stuff with the gritty Scotsman. That's right. And uh, why don't you tell everybody to stay gritty? Stay gritty, everybody. Not like that. You gotta say. Uh, <laughs> you gotta say like. Um, all right, folks, thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, stay gritty out there or something like that. Thanks for watching the podcast. <laughs> stay gritty. <laughs> See, I hurt my bloody throat doing that American. Uh, you got to say it with your usual panache. <laughs> uh, panache. Mm-hmm. That's a funny word, isn't it? I don't even know what the hell that means. <laughs> Panache. Style. Style. I don't have any Flair. style. Flair. Um, well, if you made it all the way through this, mm-hmm. thank you for watching. And catch another episode of Gritty Bowman Podcast. And uh, in the meantime, stay gritty. How about that? that <laughs> I right? like that one. All right. All, all right. right. Thanks, folks. Brilliant. Cheers. I've got to take a push big time. <laughs> oh. All right, friends. Thanks for listening and supporting the podcast. Don't forget about our deal with Mountain Ops. Type in the word gritty at checkout and get 20% off until the end of the year. 
For those of you who have not seen the Full Draw Film Tour this year and want to go, check out their website for their tour schedule. And if you haven't done so, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel or to the Gritty Bowman TV podcast on iTunes or Podbean so you can see all the latest video content we have produced. And be sure to have a look at the new Elk 101 website where you can find our podcast and other great elk hunting content. Thank you for taking the time to leave us your feedback. We really appreciate your sincere support of our show. Finally, let me leave you with this quote by President Theodore Roosevelt, who in 1905 said, In a civilized and cultivated country, wild animals only continue to exist at all when preserved by sportsmen. The excellent people who protest against all hunting and consider sportsmen as enemies of wildlife are ignorant of the fact that in reality, the genuine sportsman is by all odds the most important factor in keeping the larger and more valuable wild creatures from total extermination. Friends, always take the time to educate those around you about your role as a hunter in preserving the wild creatures of this world. If you don't, who will? As always, good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. <laughs>